The area of Rome that we call the Vatican was once a desolate swampland, frequently flooded by the river Tiber and infested with mosquitoes. This name, Vaticanus, is supposed to have come from either the prophecies of oracle priests who dwelt in these hills, or from the pathetic cries of an infant born here. The Roman emperors Caligula and Nero decided that this hill should have a circus built upon it. This Circus Maximus was a bloodthirsty spectacle in which Christians were burned alive, crucified, or torn apart by beasts of prey. One victim of this circus, a man named Simon Peter, died on this spot around the year 68 AD. Once a fisherman in Galilee, his life changed forever when he met our Lord, Jesus Christ, and was charged with devoting his life to a new church, one with Christ at the head. Peter visited Rome several times later in life, spreading the gospel as he went. The last time, he was crucified, just as Jesus was, except that he asked to be turned upside down, because he found himself unworthy to receive the same death as our Lord. According to tradition, St. Peter was buried on the northwest side of this circus. This location quickly became a place of prayer for Rome's Christians, and modern archaeologists have confirmed that by 160 AD, an aedicula, or little building, was built above the presumed resting place of Peter's bones. A piazza capable of holding 30 to 40 pilgrims completed the shrine. 150 years later, after Constantine emancipated Christians in his empire, the Roman pontiffs erected a new church over Peter's grave, which was consecrated by Pope Sylvester I in 324 AD. This huge building took the form of the basilica, a building type identified with the law courts of Rome. The nave contained columns 45 feet tall, spolia taken from other buildings around Rome. These columns formed two colonnades, which supported walls that were another 60 feet tall, and framed a massive nave, which was close to 360 feet long. However, the walls were straight verticals and had no arched support to protect from lateral motion. Old St. Peter's Basilica lasted 1,100 years, but by the 14th century, there was a great fear that it would collapse. Successive popes attempted repairs and renovations to parts of the basilica, until Pope Julius II took the seat of Peter. He was considered the Renaissance Pope for his massive ambition and ability to take on several huge and complex projects at once. This was a man who rode out at the head of the papal army to drive the French out of Italy, worked to curb the power of Rome's leading families, and was perhaps the most prolific patron of arts in the Renaissance. Julius II appointed the architect Donato Bramante to the task of tearing down old St. Peter's and building a new basilica in its place. Bramante's plan was to set a great imitation of the Pantheon atop of the structure and space of Roman basilicas. With this new church at the center of Western civilization, there could be no question that Christianity had superseded the world's pagan past. Bramante and Julius II worked furiously to tear down the old edifice and successfully raised the four monumental piers that would support the dome in the years before they died. Thousands of cartloads of travertine and marble taken from the Colosseum were used in the construction. Pope Julius II compared this church to a new Temple of Solomon, and to fund the project, offered indulgences to the faithful in return for donations towards construction. This action sparked a chain of events that began with great resistance in Germany, and led to the Protestant Reformation, and eventually resulted in the creation of evangelical denominations, and us being here, and going to see the Vatican. Lance up! Bramante's dying wish was to have the painter, Raphael, succeed him as the architect of St. Peter's. Raphael enlarged Bramante's plan by converting the Greek cross into a Latin cross shape. This was the first of many iterations on the shape of the cross, as architects debated whether the ideal should be perfect symmetry and geometry, or tradition and a processional axis. Construction faltered soon after, as Raphael and his core team of designers all died. Two Medici popes rose to the seat of Peter in a short space of time, and together made some of the worst foreign policy decisions in the history of the papacy. Antonio da San Gallo, the next architect, was cut off in the building process by the sack of Rome in 1527, 
which was a direct result of the Medici Pope's bungling. It was a decade later before work could resume. Under Pope Paul III, who is called the Last Renaissance Pope, and the first of the Counter-Reformation Popes, Michelangelo became the chief architect of St. Peter's. This sculptor artist was renowned for his white marble Pieta in old St. Peter's Basilica, and for his painting of the Sistine Chapel during the reign of Pope Julius II. These frescoes, the climax of the Vatican Museums, are hailed as one of the greatest artworks in the world. The 2,400 square feet of art on the ceiling depict scenes from Genesis, as well as from mankind's first and second fall. Old Testament prophets are figured on the walls, interspersed with sibyls, the pagan prophetesses who are said to have also predicted the coming of Christ. On the altar wall is Michelangelo's painting of the Last Judgment, an intense, dramatic sequence of the damned and saved, receiving their just reward at the second coming of Christ. Michelangelo was in his late 70s when he accepted responsibility for the completion of St. Peter's, on the condition that he be allowed to reduce the size of the plan. San Gallo's plan, he insisted, would be extremely dark on the inside, and allow for crimes to occur in its recesses. Michelangelo went back to Bramante's Greek cross plan, which he further reduced in size, and he enlarged the piers. The Pantheon inspired Michelangelo's design for the façade of the Basilica, but he moved away from Bramante's version of the Pantheon's dome. Instead, he studied Brunelleschi's dome of the Florentine Duomo, and he designed an object to transform the Roman skyline. Meanwhile, in the late 1500s, Pope Sixtus V was transforming the Roman cityscape. He cleaved wide avenues through the city to join Christian and ancient monuments. He took the ancient obelisks that the Roman emperors had taken from Egypt, and placed them at termination points in specific piazzas. The first to be moved was the obelisk that once stood in Nero's Circus Maximus. It was moved over 800 feet to stand before the Basilica of St. Peter, whose namesake died under the shadow of the obelisk. Sixtus V placed a cross at the top of each obelisk, another example of the church triumphant conquering pagan cult worship. Carlo Moderno was the architect who would execute Michelangelo's design and finally complete the basilica. The Pope at the time did ask to once again return to the Latin cross design. The nave was thus extended, and an inscription on the entablature reads, In honor of the Prince of the Apostles, Paul V Borghese, a Roman, Supreme Pontiff in the year 1612, the seventh of his pontificate. However, Paul V and Carlo Moderno were not the last contributors to the Basilica. Just like Old St. Peter's and the Temple of Solomon before it, the new basilica quickly accumulated statues, relics, and art. The great sculptor Gian Lorenzo Bernini supervised much of the interior of the basilica, chose the colored marble, and designed the two principal altars. Especially significant is the baldacchino designed by Bernini, which emphasizes the altar that stands over the tomb of Peter. Most churches of the day would use a permanent dome structure called a ciborium to emphasize a principal altar, whereas a baldachin is a small cloth canopy supported by staves, used to shelter the Holy Sacrament during a procession. Bernini's baldachino references the Temple of Solomon, with four bronze-clad spiral pillars that hold off thin bronze curtains. The work is twelve stories tall, and yet the artist managed to blend a sense of lightness and movement with a clear monumentality and permanence. It was also Bernini who designed the colonnades that defined the piazza in front of the basilica, which can hold 200,000 people. St. Peter's Basilica remains a metaphor for the whole Catholic Church, now and forever. Ever growing, it bears the personal marks of thousands of people who have worked to create a song of beauty and majesty, set in stone. Many of these people used the church to fuel their pride, but for many more unnamed workers and patrons all throughout the Christian world. The creation of this church was an act of devotion and love for the God of St. Peter, the first Pope, the fisherman from Galilee.